Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Our Set Play, and today I am going to talk to you about the top 10 tedious things that I have to do as an artist. I did this as a blog post a few years ago in reaction to the fact that so many people seem to think that being an artist is just all fun and games and you just sit at home and paint and draw all day, when in actuality there is a lot of work involved with being an artist and some of it can actually be quite boring. This video would also be good for somebody who is still at the hobby level that is thinking about doing art professionally. So number one, cleaning my brushes. This is a must, obviously. If you're going to paint, you need to clean your brushes. Otherwise, you'll be ruining your brushes, and you lose a lot of money that way. I tend to be a little bit rough on my brushes, so I buy cheaper brushes to begin with. Um, however, it is still very important to clean your brushes, because if you don't, paint will start to build up here. And it will build and build and build until it becomes crusty and you can't use it anymore. And also, depending on what kind of medium you're using, if you're using watercolor, for instance, if you don't get all that pigment out, it can actually stain your, your painting, um, even like a couple days later. So it's very important that you make sure you clean your brushes. And you want to clean them as soon as you are done using them. You don't want to leave them in the water because if you do, they'll start to bend and they'll get ruined, especially the thinner brushes that you want, like the liner brushes that you want to use for fine detail. It's kind of hard to use it for detail when it's going like this. The next thing, number two, would be protecting my artwork with a protective spray or varnish. Um, this can be tedious in more than one way. The first way is the fact that no two varnishes are alike. You want to make sure that you have a varnish that is good for the medium that you're working in. For instance, if you are working in pastel, you want a fixative that is made for pastel because you will get discoloration. You will make you will get spots on your artwork that looks darker if it is not the correct kind of varnish. The same goes for watercolor and other paintings. You want to make sure that you have something that is specifically formulated to work with the medium you're working with. And they make all kinds, but they can be a little bit pricey depending on what you want to get. The second part of that that's tedious, and it's probably the most tedious part, is the fact that you have to know what you are doing when you are spraying your artwork. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to ruin it. That's just how it is. You don't want to spend hours, days, weeks on a piece in, and have it come out exactly how you like it just to ruin it in the varnish stage. So you want to read up on how to varnish it. It does become second nature after a while. I've been doing it since I was 14, so now it's kind of just second nature to me. However, it's really important to learn. You want to try it out on test paper. You want to, you really just want to know what you're doing before you do it. Also, another thing that is tedious about it, see, I'm telling you this is a very tedious thing, is the fact that you have to make sure that the conditions are right. You don't want it to be too humid. You don't want it to be too cold or else it, the varnish just won't set up right. I live in an area where the weather can be unpredictable. One day it'll be hot, the next day it'll be cold, one day high humidity, so it makes it difficult for me. So I have pieces that tend to build up over time that I need to varnish. So I have to keep them separate from my other artwork, and I make sure that I leave notes for myself. For instance, with my colored pencil pieces, I'll put them in my portfolio, I'll put a little note there saying that it needs to be sprayed, um, for my paintings on canvas, I have a, a separate stack for those, and I try to keep them covered up so dust doesn't get on them. Number three, promotion. This is probably my least favorite of all. Um, I'm not, it's not the best thing that I, I'm, it's not the thing that I'm the best at. Um, it's very difficult because you can be really good at art, but have no idea how to market. I'm still learning. And it's very, very time consuming. Luckily, right now, I still have a job outside of my artwork, and I also am going to school. So I don't have much time anyways. What little time I do have is going towards creating art. But I do have certain websites that I sell prints on, and I sell products on, and I also have my blog. And these are all things that need to be promoted, and it takes a lot of time. And once I am out of school, I know that I the majority of my time is probably going to go towards promoting my artwork. It's just how it is if you're going to be a professional artist. Um, number four, finding storage. Now, this can 
this goes for a lot of things, but I'm speaking specifically about artwork itself. I have a lot of larger canvases, and it's very difficult to store them. I, right now, I think I have a closet <laughs> that's dedicated to my artwork, and I have them in, like, large sheets covering them to keep the dust off them. It's, it's really difficult if you're somebody who's very prolific, especially when you're trying to sell and it takes time to sell artwork. It just gets very difficult and tedious, and you want to make sure you're storing your stuff safely. Obviously, it's easier for works with paper because you can get these neat portfolios to do it in, and that helps a lot. And there are easier ways to store things. It's just something to keep in mind if you want to start creating on a regular basis that you want to make sure you have a safe place to store your canvases so they don't get dented and scuffed up. Number five, taking photos and scanning my artwork. I sell prints online. In order to sell prints online, you want to make sure that the way you're presenting it is exactly how it looks in real life. You want to make sure that when it gets printed, you the, the person that's buying it is going to have an exact copy of what you have. That means you can't have crops, you, you have to crop it right, you can't have frames in it, you can't have it be cro crooked, it can't be blurry. This is very difficult with larger pieces because I have a scanner that I can use for my smaller pieces, but... Larger pieces are very difficult because you have to photograph them. And you want to make sure you have natural lighting to do that. You want to make sure you have even lighting to do that. Lighting that's not going to discolor your artwork when you're taking pictures. It's all very difficult sometimes, and it does take a lot of practice. And you want to make sure you have good equipment to do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get a clear photo. Number six. This is a very, very important part, and you should never, you don't want to ever put it off. You need to back up your files. If you are selling online, if you are, especially if you're somebody who's a digital artist, you or a photographer, you want to make sure you have those files backed up. I have had probably four computers crash in the last six years. So, luckily, I backed up my files. So I still have artwork on my thumb drives from 2012 because I was sure to back it up. It is very, very, very important. Some things I have backed up on two or three thumb drives, just because you can lose those or those could go bad as well. Technology being what it is today, it can be very fickle, and you just want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row. Number seven, keeping records and documentation. This kind of goes along with backing up your files, but I'm speaking more along the lines of when you start selling. You want to have records of your paintings. You want to have records of how much they cost, who you sold them to, how much you sold them for, things like that for tax purposes. And that is probably one of the things that really, really is the least fun. I keep receipts. I keep as many documents as I can. You want to document how many art supplies you're buying. You want to document how much you spend on it because that's going to go towards what that's going to go towards taxes too. You want to make sure that they know that you're making more or it's just complicated and not fun at all. Number eight, keeping track of my work online as far as copyright goes. This is something that every artist who's online has had happen to them. You put your artwork online because you want to sell it. You want people to see it. However, some person who either doesn't know about copyright laws or just doesn't care will inevitably come and take your file and use it for purposes that you didn't give them permission for, whether it be to advertise their own product, put it on their Facebook, or worst case scenario, claim it as their own. It does happen. There is There are ways you can keep track of these things. Um, I use the, the Google image search, and that helps me do a reverse search, and it helps me to find where my artwork is on the web, and I have found it, and I have been able to contact people and tell them to take it down. Um, but it is, it's out there, it's, it's going to happen, people will steal your work if you put it online. Don't let that discourage you from putting it online, because otherwise buyers won't really see it either, especially this day and age. It's, the internet is a really great tool, but it does have its downfalls, and it can be tedious trying to keep track of where all your files are going. Number nine, framing and matting. This is another thing that can be quite expensive that isn't always a lot of fun. I tend to, I find websites online where I can buy cheaper frames. I don't want to, I don't custom frame my work. I don't have the money for that. There are a few websites, though, that you can put in what, exactly what you want, the size, choose the frame, tell them what mat you want. 
you want to make sure that you have archival products. You want to make sure that they're going to last and that they're not going to damage your artwork. So that's very important. Um, certain pieces have to be matted. Pieces on paper have to be matted. They can't be pressed against the glass because it will damage them, especially things like um, pastel that can be affected by static clinging. You want to make sure that they're not touching the glass. So you have to make sure that they're matted. So these are all little things that you have to think about from the wire hanger to the shape to the color to make sure that it's, I mean, it can be fun, but in other ways, it's just kind of annoying. Number 10, buying and storing materials. Now this is probably the funnest of all of them, but it can definitely still be very tedious, again, with lack of space. Right now, I'm in the process of setting up my studio, so I don't have a place set aside for my artwork or for my supplies. I've been working in my living room, so this can be very difficult, especially since some products, such as varnishes and things like that, need special storage. You don't want, there's things that are corrosive that you shouldn't be storing with other things, and you have to focus on, you know, is this poisonous, is this corrosive, is this flammable? And these are things you have to keep in mind when storing your art supplies. Not to mention organizing them. That can be kind of complicated as well, especially if you're like me and you want every art supply out there known to man, because I just tend to be that way. I want everything, and I want a place to put it. The, the buying part gets tedious when you are in the middle of a piece, like an acrylic piece, and you've run out of white, and you didn't realize you were so low on white, and no store around you sells the brand that you use, so you have to order it online. So then you have to wait to finish your painting until you get your white, and white is something that you will run out of a lot. Um, things like that. Now, should you take precautions to make sure that doesn't happen? Yes, absolutely. However, it does happen, or sometimes things spill, or things like that. Otherwise, shopping for art supplies can be fun, other than the money. They are expensive, you want to make sure you have the right price, and you want to try and shop around, and that can be a little bit tedious as well. So, that's my top ten things that I find tedious as an artist. I'm sure that there are more, and I may end up doing more videos later on. Thank you for listening, and I hope some of the things that I spoke about are things you can relate to, or they may even help you when you are deciding to become an artist. Bye!